All right. Um, let's talk about Broffenbrenner's ecological theory. Um, now, one of the things that he says uh, about child development is that um, it's a combination of um, ongoing things that are happening uh, biologically, cognitively, and psychologically, along with uh, the influences of their changing environment, their changing context. Um, and that individuals are constantly embedded within a particular context where they change from one to another. So in this case, context doesn't necessarily mean age uh, in terms of development. It means uh, moving from one situation to another. Examples might be, all right, so I'm at home for a little while in the morning as a child, and that's one context with which I am uh, developing biologically, cognitively, psychologically, and have influences from particular um, things in my environment. Uh, and then maybe uh, for a few hours I'm at preschool or I'm at school. Um, and that's a different context where I'm developing biologically, psychologically, and cognitively and have different environmental stimuli that influence those things. So that's uh, the basis of the theory. Now, uh, as you read about in your chapter, um, he talks about um, these different spheres of influence within the ecological model. Um, and so here's just some examples, a, a pictorial for you, so that you can get a sense of what are some things that Broffenbrenner was really talking about. The microsystem being the most immediate unit, that's the child herself or himself, um, and his primary caregivers, whether it's the family, uh, a child care center, um, those kind of things. Then uh, we move on to the mesosystem, um, which uh, goes uh, kind of outside of the, the child and the family. Um, and that probably actually, the mesosystem probably includes uh, the child care centers. Um, so forgive me for, for messing up on that. Uh, so that would be things like school, neighborhoods, uh, churches, uh, things that um, the child might find herself or himself in frequently, um, but not as frequent as the microsystem. Then, um, outside of that, we have the exosystem. Uh, might be friends of the family or extended family. Um, things that might influence the mesosystem, like school boards or uh, the media, uh, neighbors, government agencies, those kind of things. Uh, all right, and then outside of the exosystem, uh, we have the macrosystem. And that is uh, customs of the culture, ideology of the culture, attitudes. We have macro societal messages that are embedded within systems. Um, those would include stereotypes and prejudices. Um, and then finally, uh, the chrono system, which is really an uh, example would be like historical eras, um, which influence all of these things um, in terms of the... Uh, the behaviors of people, um, the influences of systems, uh, depending upon the generation or era that we find ourselves living in. All right, the last uh, part that I'll say about this um, is uh, one of the things that um, we find really important about this theory is that um, it's, Im it's important for us to understand how complex human development is um, but Broffenbrenner really helps us to understand this, this interplay between the ecology of the person and their biological uh, development. Uh, criticisms of uh, this theory are that the model is too complex and that you could never measure it or study it. Um, that's understandable. It is very complex, but uh, human development is complex. Hope this is helpful.